Thanks for watching Gaming Out of Suitcases. I'm Sean Rice from the international tour of the Adams Family, and I'm a big gamer. So much so that I travel with a big suitcase full of games. I think the game that I played most on this tour is a new one. It just came out last year, called Level 7 Escape. Here's the premise. You wake up seven levels underground in a laboratory where you've been taken hostage as a test subject. Now this laboratory is being run by the government in collaboration with intelligent aliens. These aliens are led by an alien named Dr. Kronos, who's been working with our government and trading him special trade secrets, special technology, in return for having his free reign with human test subjects. But something has gone wrong. The soldiers here at Subterra Bravo, where you're being held, are on edge, because the clone aliens that Dr. Kronos has been creating are getting more and more aggressive. It's going to be a big powder keg of chaos. Now, there are seven different scenarios in the base game of Level 7 Escape, one for each of the levels that you have to escape through to make it out completely. Each level adds a little bit of the narrative to the storyline as you make it through. There's so much variety with this game. Even with just seven scenarios, you can play it over and over and over again and never have the same experience twice. Each level can be played separately as its own individual game, and truthfully, with each level taking between 30 minutes and two hours to complete, it's pretty much a one-time sitter. But if you want, you can also play a campaign that goes all the way through the beginning to the end and see if you can make it out alive. Quite the challenge. Here are a couple things that make this game really unique. First, fear. The game uses a special twist in that your success is very much dependent upon how well you manage your fear. Meaning, as your fear drops, of course, you become more level-headed and your intelligence goes up but your fight power goes down. As your fear rises, your fight power goes up, you get some speed, but the aliens are more drawn to you. The aliens here are attracted to the pheromones that you release off when you get adrenaline, so the more fearful your character is, though he gets stronger, the aliens start to follow you and attack you, and they start to pop out almost in every room that you're in. Second, the board is always changing. Now, every scenario is going to have a couple of tiles that it wants you to set aside that are going to be the objective tiles for you to find throughout the game, but majority of the game is you exploring and kind of creating the board as you go. It's very reminiscent of Zombies or Betrayal of the House on the Hill, so every time you play a level, it's going to have a different floor plan. Third, Vents. This game not only uses door-to-door -door travel, so you're walking around through the rooms, but it lets you crawl around through the vents, which is really, really interesting, because as you're creating the tiles and making the floor plan as you explore the rooms, you're not only just setting up the floor plan, but as you look along the sides of the tiles, you'll see vent ducts. You're also creating a complex series of vents. Your character or your enemies can travel from one end of the facility to the other using the vents, but if the vent doesn't connect up to another a tile that has a vent marker on it, it's a dead end. Fourth, and my favorite, is the chaos factor. Now, at the beginning of the game, both the alien clones and the soldiers are going to be searching for you. You are the main target. However, each scenario is going to set up a certain set of circumstances, and if you meet those circumstances, the aliens will gain threat, and the guards will gain fear, meaning they will also start to hunt each other. As long as you can control your threat and your fear and make sure it's lower than the guards and the aliens, they will start attacking each other and starting an all-out war, and you can slip out the back door. Fifth is how they treat enemy activation. Now, in most games, uh, the whole game is played in rounds, meaning player one will go, then player two, three, four, and then the enemies will have their turn to attack. Not in this game. In this game, player one goes, and then the enemies might go. And then player two goes, and then the enemies could go again. Player three, then the enemies. Four, then the enemies. They go at the end of every single player's turn which means a couple of different things. It means they're going to close in around you a lot faster than they normally would in another game, and if you're stuck in a room with an enemy, they may have four different chances to attack you before you have a chance to attack them, so it's very likely that you will die. Six is the fact that this is a semi-cooperative game. What does that even mean? In a regular game, all the players are kind of out for themselves, and there's going to be one winner. In a cooperative game, all the players band together to fight against the game board, who acts as the actual opponent in the game. Well, this is a semi-cooperative game, meaning it's a kind of a mix between the two, and you have a choice. You can either work all together to try to get out, or you can kind of 
be every man for himself. Thematically, your character doesn't know these other people from Adam. You may want to band up with them for a little bit and then leave them for dead just so you can get to the door. Now, when my friends and I play, we generally try to do it as a team, uh, which means there's a lot of self-sacrifice going on. Uh, but we play it as if one of our characters at least gets to the exit, then we all move on as a group to the next level. But if everyone dies, then we stay. But that is just kind of a house rule that we use. Uh, you can, of course, do it any way you'd like. And seven is lockdown. Now, if your life didn't have enough stress in this game, they've introduced a timetable. Once you have accomplished the major action in this game, uh, whatever the challenge is of the scenario that they have set up for you, lockdown will begin. And lockdown means that you have a certain number of turns to get to the exit before the entire level is sealed off forever and you are trapped in there with the aliens and the soldiers. Now, there's going to be a certain number of lockdown tokens in a lockdown pool set up by the scenario, um, and at the end of every player's turn wh who doesn't get out, you take a token away. So that lockdown pool is going to go very, very quickly. It's always a big race to the finish line. Level 7 Escape is very challenging and very, very addictive. Now the only drawback that I see to the game is the actual rule book itself. Now I've played some complicated games. I'm a very avid Arkham Horror player, uh, and if any of you out there play Arkham Horror, you know that rule book is whoa, intensive. Well, there's a lot of rules going on here in Level 7. They're not hard to learn, however the rule book is not laid out in the best format. Uh, you'll find yourself flipping back and forth, trying to figure out where you saw that one paragraph, and once you finally find it, it's going to be on a page that has nothing else to do with what else is going on in the game when you're looking that up. So it's very confusing. Now luckily, there are a number of players like myself who have encountered this and have kind of got together and put up um, a number of different user-made player hand guides um, where they've taken all the rules and they've kind of grouped them together in a more understandable format um, where it's easier to find things. So I'm going to put a link down below to those. Um, you can find them at BoardGameGeek.com. There's some great ones up there and hopefully those will help you out as you're learning the game. Once you do have a handle on the rules, you are going to love this game. It inevitably plays out just like a movie. Uh, you're going to have one person probably at the very end who just barely makes it through the door before lockdown ends and the aliens are closing in. Or you might feel like you've got everything in the bag and everything's going your way and then all of a sudden, bam, all hell breaks loose around you just like it would in a movie. It's very, very exciting. Since the game's release, Privateer Press has also put out uh, a new expansion that adds uh, about five different levels, different scenarios to the game, um, adding to the storyline as if you were about to make it out but you just didn't. So now you've got to go back down to the depths and try to find a new way out that you didn't know it even existed. Very, very cool. And they've added a whole bunch of new um, creatures and, and different tactics and things like that that really spice up the game once you've gotten through the first seven and you really know those levels really well. Um, they also have a companion game that is coming out uh, called Level 7 Omega Protocol. I think their whole idea is to kind of create a whole world of Level 7 and have multiple games with multiple expansions going on within uh, that world. Um, now, the Omega Protocol is more of a miniatures game. Um, when the Level 7 came out, um, a lot of the people who were fans of Privateer Press's few, uh, previous games were kind of disappointed because there weren't miniatures involved. I personally don't think that that detracts from the game, and I think it actually makes it a lot easier for it to travel. Uh, but if you are a miniatures person, then you really uh, like a Mega Protocol. Um, the basis of that is that uh, everything's been sealed up, locked away, and now the Marines have been called in, and they're going to go in and just clear out everything that's still alive in there and um, kind of clean house. Speaking of travel, uh, the entire game fits into two of these boxes and one deck box. Um, I love this. This is actually a, a bead organizer that I got at Michael's, and it's perfect for this game because it has um, a top section with compartments where I can put all the components of the game and kind of keep them separated, and it has a bottom section where I can keep all the tiles. Um, so two of these boxes works perfectly. I've even got all the expansion stuff in there because I went out and I bought Lockdown. Um, so that fits in here as well as the base game without having it being too squeezed. So two of these boxes in a deck box make makes it really, really easy to travel, throw it in a bag, uh, makes it really easy to pack up, put away, um, makes it a perfect game for traveling on the road. Hopefully I've sparked your interest a little bit about Level 7 Escape. Be sure to come back on Wednesday where I will go through the rules more in depth and give you a full playthrough and so you can see what the game is like for yourself. 
Till then, keep gaming.